My name is Doug Maddox. I am from the great and honorable state of North Carolina. North Carolina? What street? <laughs> well, this instrument I'm playing you is the All-American Five-String Banjo. It's an instrument that I grew up with in North Carolina, and I've had a fascination for my entire life. Now, the five-string banjo was actually invented in America, and it played a pretty big part in everyday American life throughout the 19th century. These little tunes are really easy to play. That's because I'm just using two fingers to play them with, the index finger of the right hand and the thumb, just those two. And here's the sound. Nice and simple. Anybody could do it. Most folks were right up until the middle 1800s. And then this fellow named Stephen Foster came along. And Stephen Foster single-handedly ruined everything. That's because Stephen Foster was writing tunes that were more difficult. Like his little tune, Old Susanna. Well, it required the banjo player to add a third finger to the picking pattern. And on top of that, a few years later, they would have to add once again these little forms of abject torture called finger picks, which are not only uncomfortable, but they're also hard to locate. Now, of course, I don't know how many of you folks ever had occasion to go shopping in a music store to pick a pick, but the general rule of thumb when picking a pick is to never nitpick, even though you'll find there's a peck of picks out there to pick from. And one should be picky and pick through a pack of picks for picking just any pick. <laughs> and the reason for picks and frets. Well, together, they help make the banjo louder. Piece by Johann Sebastian Bach. Called Yesu, Joy of Man's Desiring. Late 1800s, the banjo was so beloved in America that even classical banjo players became famous and through their concerts introduced this instrument to the world. We're going to move to the turn of the 20th century. American popular music changed to a style called ragtime, which was absolutely perfect for the banjo, in much the same way that rock and roll is perfect for the guitar. Starting off with Scott Joplin's Entertainer Rag. going to move to the 1920s and because the banjo was at the peak of his popularity back in the roaring 20s it was mandatory that banjo player be able to come out of the rhythm section sometime during the night appear in front of the orchestra and play some of the hot jazz tunes of the era this is eddie peabody's i'm alabama band style of jazz was developing from 1939. What's new? Now this smoother, more sophisticated style of jazz, well it literally put the 1930s professional banjo player right in the line of fire because if they wanted to keep their orchestra jobs they were going to have to give up the raucous sound of the jazz banjo and they would have to take up this new more sophisticated instrument called the jazz guitar the 1930s progressed, so did these early jazz guitar players, and before long they started to find a real voice for the instrument. Now one of those fellas actually became the first superstar of the jazz guitar, a fellow named Charlie Christian. 
whose approach to the guitar was totally different from the banjo player's approach. And because he was working in the early 40s with the world-renowned clarinetist Benny Goodman, well, his style on guitar was bound to be heard both on recordings with Goodman and in live performance with Goodman. takes over for the banjo is the preeminent string instrument in jazz. And where does the banjo go? Well, the banjo goes from being a musical instrument in the 1930s, almost overnight, becoming a musical oddity, being played mostly by vaudeville comedians and country comics. It wasn't until the 1940s this fellow named Earl Scruggs walked out onto the Grand Ole Opry stage, ill prepared as a comedian. He was out there that night to play this instrument. Bluegrass. Now, it was this style called bluegrass that brought the banjo back and brought it back in a big way because in the 1970s, this movie came out called Deliverance. And in the theme music, they had this guitar player duking it out with this five-string bluegrass banjo player. See, Dueling Banjos wasn't really written for the movie Deliverance. It had actually been written some 20 years before the movie. It was a minor country hit in the early 50s, the original title, Feuding Banjos. And at that time, Nashville didn't team up a guitar player and a banjo player. They teamed up what you might expect. Dueling, feuding banjos, they teamed up two banjo players. Now, one of them was a four-string Dixieland banjo player. Now, that's the strumming kind. That fellow's name was Arthur Smith, and they had him dueling with a five-string bluegrass banjo player. A fellow named Don Reno. to do tonight folks is <laughs> something you will never hear another banjo player ever do again in my particular price range <laughs> dueling banjos originally played on two banjos I'm gonna play that original version from the 1950s tonight on this stage utilizing but one banjo Thank you all.